Okay, my name is Sylvia and I'm the lead farmer group uh, from Kiambu and we have six farmers in total in our group and we planted three different crops. So we had cabbage, we have tomatoes and we have the French beans. So what happened is we are six of us, so two people each picked one different crop and I planted tomatoes as you can see here. So um, and the reason uh, we're very interested just to, you know, just to try out the netting technology. It was something new for all of us. Some of us had already used the, uh, the plastic tunnel um, and we've had different you know, experiences with it and different challenges. One thing maybe I can say about the plastic tunnel is that, um, I mean, it worked well because it was able to, you know, like help us to be able to keep away most of the pests out there. And then uh, it was able to also give us a good uh, climate inside the plastic tunnel. But then some of the challenges that we've also had with it is that we find that sometimes in our area, it can get very hot. So when it's very hot, we find our plants are getting scorched in the plastic tunnel. And something else that we've also realized is, um, you know, you have to keep watering to make sure that the soil is nice and moist so that the, the plant has got vigorous growth. And also when it gets very hot, uh, the pests, when they get in, then it's very difficult to control them because they multiply very quickly. And also the re it's very expensive to put up a plastic tunnel and the maintenance, you also have to put some budget aside to make sure that you're able to uh, deal with the maintenance. It gets very windy. And so what happens is um, the, you know, the, the, the papers can start flying off and you have to keep calling someone to come and repair. And the repair is very expensive for the plastic tunnel. So um, for those of us who then started the net house, we found that it works a bit differently and we are very happy with it so far, in my opinion. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we have two farmers who did tomatoes, two did French beans and two did cabbage. So for those of us who are doing tomatoes, one thing that I've noticed is we've been able to control the pests a bit better in the net house. And the you know the thing with the net house is that you know it's nice and warm but doesn't get too hot so the pest population is not multiplying very quickly so we're able to control our pests and we're able to keep out most of the pests uh, coming into the net house and for those who are planting cabbages uh, you know one particular farmer was able to keep away aphids completely he, he didn't get uh, any aphid infestation in the net house but one other farmer got aphid infestation and you know what we had thought about it was that most likely the one who got the infestation the aphids physically came in because it's impossible for them to pass through the net and the ones who planted the french beans the two farmer who planted french beans did not have any pest infestation whatsoever. They did not have any black aphids and we did not notice any bean fly at all. Something else maybe I can talk about um, our experience with the net housing is that it worked very well in terms of conservation of water. When it rained, you know, no matter how heavy the rain is, when the water comes into the house, into the net house, it comes in as a gentle shower, but it still drains the soil very well. So it means that we saved a lot on our water. When you compare that uh, with the plastic, you know, when it rains, of course, water will not get into the plastic tunnel. So we are able to get in rainwater. We are able to use our drip irrigation, which helped us to conserve the water. And then for myself, we also did, uh, you know, organic mulch, which helped to uh, like retain the moisture in the soil. And also the organic mulch helps to protect the microorganisms which are already in the soil and that's something that we're very happy about with the water and then um, something else I also noticed even with myself and all the other farmers was that in the net house for those of us who stay in a place that's very windy the wind just goes through which means we are able to have a very durable house then we've not had any repair in the past few months that we've had it and I don't foresee us having repairs coming soon, which means the durability will be much higher. I'm hoping I can be able to even have my house for almost 10 years. Uh, you know, it also has the steel. It, it, it has been done with a steel frame, which means that, you know, we are not afraid about the termites or any other problem like that. And we'll be able to have it 
uh, working well. But something else maybe I can talk about with other farmers who would be interested is that it's very adaptable. So even if you don't have the steel, if you treat your wood, it can still work. It's very adaptable. And then also I found that the produce has been quite high. Uh, we've been able to be harvesting. The size of this house is an 8 by 20 uh, meters. And we are getting very good harvest. For my tomatoes, uh, since I started harvesting, the first week, of course, was a bit low because um, of the... Um, uh, you know, it's a new plant, so it was still bringing up the fruits. But when we're getting to the peak season, we are able to get between 50 to 100 kilos of tomatoes per week. But the other farmer who has her tomatoes, she hasn't started harvesting, but we also are hoping for something good from that. Maybe now I can talk about uh, the farmers who have been planting the cabbages. I mentioned we have two who had the cabbages, and I've already mentioned that some of them had problems with the aphids. One had problem with aphid and one did not really have the problem with the aphid. Um, most of the farmers are conventional farmers. In fact, all the farmers are conventional farmers, apart from myself who has been doing organic farming. And, you know, they were very interested to try and see, you know, how does the uh, net house help us to save on the pesticide use? And uh, it was very interesting that both the cabbage farmers did not use any pesticide in their house and um, what happened with one he was able to control uh, the aphids very well so he didn't have any aphids he didn't use any pesticide but when he had he had some uh, cabbages which were planted outside the net house as control those were affected and he had to use pesticide but then inside the house there was no pesticide use and he was very excited about it and you know what we are happy about it is that you know for the first time he was happy to say that he actually had an organic crop which was safe for human consumption for the other the other cabbage farmer uh, we suspect that the aphids came in physically maybe through working you know you know someone who brought them in physically you know from working in the outside field and coming in and that's what we noticed could have been the issue he struggled a little bit but then he was very determined not to use any pesticide so he was using the biological control and he was also using uh, different strategies you know just the local strategies of uh, using repellent sprays from the natural uh, plants so he can be able to ward off the the aphids and that worked very well maybe something else just to say real quick about the cabbage farmers is they were getting very good produce uh, the net house was able to hold an average of about seven to eight hundred cabbages in an eight by twenty and what happened was that uh, when they got the production the average weight of each cabbage was weighing between two to four kilos which was very good and they were able to sell their cabbages at a good price. Tomatoes, mm. then I go back to the cabbages. So next next season, what next would, season what are you go going? for tomatoes? You go to the tomatoes. Yeah. So from the composting, we we make compost from the animals, mm. and uh, we use uh, the cow dung, but you have to allow the cow dung to lose some excess water, mm. like that area there. Okay. It's it's a bit green mm. and a lot of mm. water. Mm. So after we heap it there, it loses some water, like for one good week, and then we bring it here. Okay. So that area, it's uh, it, it, when it loses the heat, uh, mm. the water mm -hmm. now gains some heat. Okay. So we transfer with that heat, then we bring it here. Mm -hmm. uh, before we bring it here, we have to make sure we separate the the hard matter. Okay. The, those sticks, mm -hmm. they are too long. They take long to decompose. So mm -hmm. we have to move them there. But uh, at some point they will decompose, but they are going to take long. Okay. So we start with the uh, with that with mm -hmm. the with the dry matter. This is the green, uh, the, the, the dry one. Mm -hmm. And then you go for the green. 
the green is this kind of waste you see in the green so we add it we get it from the shamba yeah. you can get it from the grass area mm -hmm. cut and then we bring it here and then you introduce the the manure and then we keep repeating that okay so every time we repeat mm -hmm. then every time we are doing that we have to cover with a polythene bag mm -hmm. to reduce uh water okay to excess rain, the heat. Excess, and also increase the heat mm -hmm. so it cooks very slowly mm -hmm. but in three months time it's going to be ready for use the timing was also good when we got the net house because then uh, they were selling the cabbages at a time where cabbages had not flooded the market. So cabbage can do quite well if you do the timing, take care of them. And something else, maybe just to add one more on the pesticide, I'm sorry, just to add about the diamond back moth, it did not affect the cabbages inside the net house. But then the cabbages that were out for control were a bit affected by the diamond back moth and they had to use pesticide there. Maybe now I can talk a bit about our French bean farmers and just give a bit more information. Uh, the French bean, I think, was one of the simplest high-value crop from my group that we planted and the two farmers enjoyed planting French beans. giving it a level. Mm -hmm. mm? You see, the garden was sloping like this. Yes, yes, eh? I, I, I you saw see, that. Did you watch the down part yes, on the I other saw, side? I, I saw that, I saw and that, yes. We have done much work, mm -hmm. <laughs> leveling the land. Mm -hmm. But we see the products. Yeah. You see, with, a, with, a, with this net, yeah. you can't do it on a mm -hmm. slopey part. Yeah. You yeah. have to make the soil flat mm -hmm. first, mm -hmm. and it's a big job. Yeah. But uh, you have helped me Thank much. Thank you. To, most to give me the interest, mm -hmm. I appreciate. But you did and, well. And I know I will move on. Mm. They were very nice. Even everybody likes them. Why the, the size? Why hmm? the size? The, the size. They are straight? Yeah, they are straight. They are long. I, even I liked the seed. I liked the um, whatever products which we used. And see, how they are good? Yeah, they are good. And you see, there are very many. There are very many, mm. and the size is good. And the size is good. So mm. you can get a very good price with it. Yeah. Put uh, uh, sticky traps. Yeah. So you can see. Uh, so <laughs> there see, are flies. You see. Yeah. You see the result. Mm -hmm. You see they are very exactly that the bad things yeah, are being trapped. Yeah. So you see that there are few insects. I didn't know insects can be trapped mm. in. in by colors. Okay. Yes. Hmm? You, 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 it's good you, to learn that. You didn't. You didn't know that. I didn't know that. Okay. That's good. That's <laughs> you really have done good. great things to me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So th that means uh, people from your real IPM they work with you. They train you. The, about the, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. Sometimes we go for courses. Mm -hmm. We learn something. Oh. You. you okay. You yeah. did the training with them. Yeah. That's too nice. Then um, if God helps me. Yeah. Um. Um planning to do even better. Okay, mm. but you already did better. So globally, what do you think about this the technology? It's the first oh, time for it's, you. We highly appreciate it. Really? We have never seen something. Uh, my, for myself, let me speak for myself. I've never grown French beans in a net. Uh -huh. And to see the results, I'm uh -huh. happy about them. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. and you don't need much water. Okay. Yeah. They, did, they had very little maintenance. Um, the only thing that they had to uh, uh, do was the weeding. There was a season where we had a lot of rain. So when the rain came in, you know, the weeds came up, but that wasn't, you know, it was quite manageable. But apart from the weeding, the labor was quite manageable. Uh, they were able to do their harvest every week. Uh, the only challenge that I can talk about the French bean is the quality of the seed. The, um, one of our farmers who planted the French bean did not get a very good hybrid quality, which means it compromised the time in which he was able to harvest. So he only was able to harvest his French beans for about six weeks. And, you know, we're hoping maybe it could go a little longer, but it was still OK. But he was able to harvest every week. He made a good income out of the French beans and now has been able to rotate it, uh, to rotate the French beans and now has planted cabbages. As for the other farmer who also planted French beans, the challenge was also with the seed. The first seed she bought was very low quality, so she had poor germination 
and the germination that came up was only 30%, which means she had to replant again. But she's now replanted with a good hybrid seed and is now starting to harvest this week and uh, the prospects are very good. And, uh, you know, we've been lucky to, you know, to have good markets. Uh, most of us, we are about, you know, 40 kilometers from the city, Nairobi, which is the capital uh, city of Kenya, which means, you know, we have a lot of population in Nairobi. So we've been able to sell our produce quite well. We've not had a problem with the marketing. Uh, and our produce, for us who have been doing tomatoes, our produce is being bought by restaurants because we have very good, big, juicy tomatoes, so they're happy to buy it. The market is very close by. We've not had any problem having to sell. Uh, the French bean farmers have been doing their marketing by uh, using middlemen, and the middlemen are coming from Nairobi, not very far, and they're able to buy a very good price from the farm, from farm gate price, and they've been very happy about it. Even the cabbages, um, one of our cabbage farmers got a middleman who came and he uh, bought the cabbages in two rounds, and that was done. And now he's planting cabbages, uh, sorry, tomatoes, but our other cabbage farmer, is still now starting to sell. He's looking for the market because he planted a little later, but then he still has very good market and he's getting good offers. So we, in terms of marketing, I think I can see we've not had a problem. And another reason why we are not struggling with the marketing so much is because of uh, the quality of the produce that we have. You know, the net house has been able to make sure that our you know, plants are not getting scorched uh, the cabbages didn't undergo any stress, so they are very good and juicy. And also, um, we find the French beans are also not withered, you know. So we're able to control the climate. And because of that, the quality of the vegetable was very good. So, apart from using the um, net house, on my farm, I've used different strategies uh, on, how, on, on managing the organic farming. Uh, so apart from the net house, something else that we've been using are the repelling plants. So I've planted a lot of repelling plants on my farm. Uh, we have the rosemary, the sage, the lemongrass, and we try to spread them all around the farm, hoping that it will be able to repel a number of pests here and there. Something else that we do is um, we normally do something we call companion planting. So we plant, you know, the we normally plant... Um, good friends, you know, the plants that are good friends or help repel like different uh, pests from one crop to the other. So that way then we're able to make sure that then we, we reduce completely on our pesticide use. And then also uh, on top of the companion planting, we do something we call crop rotation. So we don't, we, we have uh, like divided our farm into beds. So what happens is we don't plant the same family of crop uh, twice on one particular area on the farm. So for example, if we had put in the uh, brassicas, we will not put in the brassicas, then we'll put in the beans for nitrogen fixing. And after the beans, we put in maybe the legumes or something else. So we normally use the crop rotation strategy. Something else we do, we do um, composting. So we make sure that uh, we renew our soils by doing composting. So how we do this is that, you know, we're, all the waste that we get from the farm, we normally uh, put it in a hole and we compost it and take care of it. And then we make sure that it's nice and rotten and it has some good worms. So when we, we introduce it back to the soil when we are planting, you find that the soil has a lot of nutrients and is able to grow well without having to put in any synthetic fertilizer at all. We're not using any synthetic fertilizer and our crops are still working very well. Something else we've, were an, another strategy we have employed is agroforestry. So we are planting, uh, you know, indigenous trees on the farm and trees that are helping with nitrogen fixing. Uh, we have the acacia albida, which is helping with the nitrogen fixing on the farm. And then it's also, so some of the plants are also uh, providing a shade. So they are uh, like reducing the scorching, especially on the green leafy vegetables that uh, do not want too much sun. And that has also worked well for us. Um, something else maybe I can uh, say maybe for, you know, the farmer group that we have is that we found that the net house is very adaptable and can be used by uh, small scale farmers. 
and uh, what we are doing is is we are sharing this technology with the local uh, farmers around us and what we are trying to tell them is you can be able to uh, plant your kitchen garden in a net house and that way you'll be able to have safe food for your family all year round and the good thing about it when you think about the cost of the net house versus the plastic the net house is you know three times cheaper than what we have to use in a plastic house and the you know the construction and the maintenance is very low if you have a problem with the net house it's very easy for you to repair it it's very simple you just need a needle and thread most times and anyone can do it you don't need a technician to do it but the most important thing about it is that we want to promote um, the use of um, organic farming we want people to use to reduce their use of pesticide and we want to make sure that organic food is available to everyone and that people here are going to be able to have safe food so if you're able to put in a kitchen garden in the net house then you're able to produce safe food for your family and if you have surplus that you take to the market then you're also spreading making sure that more people have access to the safe food <music>